If you are new to writing code with Arduino, it can be confusing on how to organize the program. But once you know where stuff goes in an Arduino program, it's actually pretty simple. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to organize the key components of an Arduino sketch, like includes, defines, constants, global variables, functions, setup, and loop. Let's dive in. Before we start, I just want to say a huge shout out to Altium, our sponsor. You can get a free trial of their really awesome software. Just check in the description below. Also, hey, while you're down there, why not subscribe to the channel? It doesn't cost you anything. It really helps us bring you the best content we have. All right, so here I am in the Arduino IDE, and it doesn't matter which IDE you're using. You could be in the online editor, or maybe you're in the Arduino 2.0 IDE. It really doesn't matter, or maybe you're in VS Code doesn't matter where you're programming this stuff. It's all going to be the same as far as this organization goes. Okay, so we open up a new sketch, and what Arduino does is it pre-populates two functions in here. It gives us setup and loop. We're going to visit these later, but right now I'm just going to go ahead and delete that because what I want to do is start from just a blank slate. All right, so what I'm going to do just in comments is kind of list out all the stuff in the order that we're going to want it generally. All right, so here's the basic order. Now, of course, every rule has exceptions, and this is definitely a rule that has exceptions, but here's the rough order we wanna lay stuff out in an Arduino sketch. First, you're gonna start off with including libraries. So if you have any libraries that you're using with your sketch, putting them at the very top is generally where you're gonna see them. So an easy way to include a library is just to go up to sketch, include library, and then select the library you wanna include, I'll use fast LED for this example, and you'll see it just inserts this line include, and then the name of the library right at the top. So I'll just go ahead and move this down to where I've got the comment. Of course, we could always just write this out on our own. The nice thing about using the shortcut up in sketch with the include library is that you know you're not gonna make any spelling errors, and as uh, simple as that might be, sometimes a spelling error can throw you for a loop for a little bit. All right, so you wanna include your libraries at the very top of the sketch. So the next things you'll want after you include the libraries is to add your constants and any defines, and also you'll wanna have your global variables. Now, you can have these intermingles. So you might have a constant and then you could have a global and then another constant, like that doesn't really matter. It's basically that these, these constants and defines and globals, they're gonna be above your user-defined functions, they're gonna be above your setup and above your loop. And the reason they need to be above is because all of this stuff is going to be depending on stuff that you say here. So you can't call a global variable before it's actually been defined and declared. That's why you put it up at the top. Because when this program gets loaded onto your Arduino IDE, the process is going to start at the top of the sketch and kind of work down. So I'm going to go ahead and type out some defines and constants in a global variable. I'm just going to follow suit with this fast LED example here. All right, so what do we have so far? Again, what do we have at the top? We have our include statement. So you start with the libraries in your include, then you do your defines and constants and your global variables. So here, you know, generally I like to try to either do just constants or just defines in a program. To me, that's a, a consistency thing, but I just want to give you an example. So here we have a define, it's called numLEDs in 12. And this is literally gonna do a search and replace. So anytime the compiler, and the compiler is the program that's gonna take our sketch and turn it into a form that can actually be loaded onto the Arduino. So anytime the compiler sees the word, the typed out letters, numLEDs, it's going to replace it with the number 12. It's like a cut and paste, right? That's what this define does. Constant, on the other hand, is a qualifier for a data type. And so what you get by using constant is type checking, which basically means if we put a bad number in for data pin that doesn't fit what the data type is, so this is a byte, so let's say we put some crazy number in here, then we're gonna get an error when we compile. And that error is helpful to us because it lets us know, hey, you screwed up. 
And I screw up all the time, so I like to see the error messages as quickly as possible. Anyway, that's why I generally go the route of constants. There's times to use defines, but I digress. Okay, so we've got a define here as an example. We've got a constant as an example. And then a global variable. This CRGB is from this fast LED library. So I'm just making an array here called LEDs. And you'll notice the size of this array is set by num LEDs. So num LEDs is this define up here, right? Now, if I did this and I put this CRGB above this define, we'd have an issue, right? Because the compiler would come through and say, hey, where's this num LEDs? We haven't seen it yet. And we'd get an error. Actually, let's go ahead and check out that error. So now watch this though. Notice I don't have setup or loop. I'm gonna go ahead and try to verify. So if you try to verify your code without setup or loop written, you go straight and you get these errors here, reference to setup, reference to loop. You get this exit status one. So let's go ahead and add setup and loop. And now I'm gonna compile again or verify again. Okay, so notice now we're not getting any error messages, but watch when I try to move this line above that define. Let's see what happens. Oh, num LEDs was not declared in this scope. So look, it's saying, hey, num LEDs, what's up? Well, that's because we're trying to call this like the, or we're out of order. Our organization is bad, right? So let's go ahead and put that back where it belongs. We will re-verify and we should be good. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense. All right, so we start at the top with libraries. Then we have our defines and constants and global variables. And then above setup and above loop is where we would put our user defined functions. So if there's a function you're gonna write, you would put it up here. So I've got a function, I'll go ahead and write it out. Again, I'm just gonna stick with this uh, example here, this fast LED example, but let me write it out. Do you need a printed circuit board design software to move your prototype to the next level? All Team Designer is a great choice for designing PCBs, sharing your design with team members, and even getting your design manufactured. What really kind of blows me away about this software is that even though it's a super powerful tool, at the same time, it's really intuitive to use. They've got helpful video tutorials built right into the software so you can kickstart your learning process and actually get something made. Right now, you can get a free trial to All Team Designer with our link in the description. That's right, you can test drive this super powerful software with a free trial. Just check out the link in the description. All right, so I've written a function called fade all. It refers to some stuff, num LEDs, that was this define up here, and this LEDs.i, this was this global variable, this uh, array that we made right here. And don't worry about what this does, just, you know, the idea again, we're talking about organization. So just to drive this home again, up at the top, what do we put libraries? After libraries, you're gonna have your defines, constants, global variables, right? After that, you have your user defined functions. Now, if I had another function, I could list it right after this right here. I could just uh, write the function out here. In this case, we'll just have one. So you can have multiple user defined functions, just one after another before the setup. Now, technically, you don't have to have user defined functions above setup or loop. You know, we could take this function, cut it out, and we could put it at the very bottom of the sketch, just like this, okay? And in most cases, this will work. However, there are some cases where it doesn't work. Now, if you don't like putting your user defined functions before setup, you prefer to have them at the bottom of the loop. A safe way to stay out of any trouble is just to put the function prototype above void setup. So the function prototype is everything up to that curly brace, basically. So if I just take this, I copy that, and I paste it right here and put a semicolon, that's our function prototype. That's not too hard, just to include that little function prototype in there. And that's just letting the compiler know, hey, there's gonna be a function called fade all. And if you look around, you'll find it somewhere in this code here. Now, according to the Arduino website, and I'll link this in the description, there is a sketch build process. This is a really interesting page. But in the pre-processing, it says that prototypes are generated for all function definitions in eno.pde files that don't already have prototypes. So see this line right here? This should be automatically generated for us. However, if you read on, it says, in some rare cases, 
prototype generation may fail for some functions. To work around this, you can provide your own prototypes for these functions. Okay, so if you're not gonna have your user defined function just fully written out above setup, then writing this function prototype out is just a cheap insurance policy to make sure you're not gonna run into any issues. I mean, to each their own, but I do think writing this function prototype is a good thing to do if you're not gonna have that user defined function above setup. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move this back. All right, so one more time. We start at the top with libraries, then we have our defines and constants, global variables. After that, user defined functions and or function prototypes. And then we get to setup and loop. And setup and loop are so important. As you saw, every Arduino program you open, every new sketch you create is gonna have these pre-written for you. So setup only runs once. And the type of things you put in here are setting the modes of pins, starting serial communication, or anything that's only gonna happen once. That's what goes in here. So I've got a couple of things that I'm gonna write in here. There's some stuff I wanna set up for this NeoPixel strip, so I'll just go ahead and do that. All right, so in the setup here, I've just got serial beginning, so I'm starting serial communication. Again, it's something that only needs to happen once. And then for that fast LED library, you add the LEDs, won't dive into this, but again, it's just something that happens once. And that's why it goes in the setup. And then finally, we get to the loop. And the loop is the meat of the program in most cases. And the loop is gonna run over and over and over. So the code you put in here is generally like the meat and potatoes of the program. Now inside your setup or inside your loop, you can refer back to your user-defined functions, right? So we can call fade all and we will inside the loop. And you can also refer back to those global variables, the defines or the constants inside your setup and your loop. So I'm just gonna write some code. It's actually from one of the uh, example sketches that come with fast LED. I'll just write out this, it'll do some cool effect. All right, so I've written some code inside loop. These are just two for loops that go through and they change how my NeoPixel LEDs look. So you'll notice inside here, I'm referring to the function fade all. So when the program's going through, it says fade all, it sees fade all, it's gonna go, oh, hey, fade all, I've seen that before, yeah. Fade all, sure, let's do this. And then you'll notice in loop, we're referring you know, to the defines that were made up above, we're referring to that global variable LEDs, that global array that we created up above. And uh, you know, this is pretty much it. All right, so let's just hit it one more time. Repetition is the mother of learning. So here we go. What's at the top? Well, we've got libraries at the top. You can either write it out yourself or can you, you can use the sketch include library and then just click on which one. It'll put it right into the top for you. So you've got your libraries at the top, then your defines and your constants and global variables. Again, these can kind of be intermixed. After that, your user-defined function. So any function you want to write, you put your functions in here before the setup. And if you don't want to put them there as an insurance policy, it's a good idea to put the function prototype up there at least. That way you can be sure you're not going to run into any issues. Then after your user-defined functions, you've got setup. Setup runs once. You put stuff that only happens once inside the setup. And then finally, we have loop. Loop's going to come at the end. And this is going to be like the quote-unquote meat and potatoes of your sketch. Now, right now, what I dare you to do just to drive this concept home is to open your Arduino IDE and go to an example sketch. Just any one of these example sketch, maybe from a library or just something that comes pre-built in with your Arduino IDE and see if you can identify this structure. See if you can find similarities uh, from what we've just shown here to one of those sketches. Might be a good exercise. Also, before you go, please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps us bring great content. Again, a huge shout out to Altium for sponsoring this video. Check out the description to get a free trial of this super powerful software. The link is right in the description. And also, if you wanna do a deep dive into this Arduino programming stuff, check out programmingelectronics.com. We have got a ton of training to get you up and running building your own projects. Controlling electronics with code, it is super fun. Take it easy and see you next time. Bye.